Good evening, this is Angela with Pegra's Permaculture. It's a beautiful July evening here in Zone 8B in Portland, Oregon. This time of year, my normal evening routine after I come and feed the poultry dinner is to pick mulberries. So I thought that I would talk a little bit about why I grow mulberries, what I like about them, some of the cautionary points about them, and how they are an important part for a diverse and resilient permaculture system in a temperate climate. Okay, so first let's knock out some of the, the cautions about growing mulberries. Before I entice you with all of the, the benefits, let's like maybe let's maybe put a, a little bit of a, the brakes on and get some perspective here. So the mulberry behind me is Illinois Everbearing. It is one that I chose on purpose. It's one of the first trees that I planted in my garden and I planted it way down here in the chicken run. And I picked it because Illinois Everbearing is much more cold hardy than some of the other mulberries I might have preferred like the Pakistani mulberry. And yet it produces a huge crop of delicious berries. They're just not as big and long as drama and dramatic as some of the other varieties. So I picked it and I put it down in the chicken run because I thought, okay, this is a plant that is gonna drop tons of fruit. Mulberries are notorious for making tons of fruit and it's very hard to get to all of it because they ripen over a series of weeks and you basically have to come and pick every single day. And I thought, well, I've heard that poultry really like mulberries. So if I grow them in my poultry run and I miss some of the fruit, it'll fall into the run and the birds will clean it up. They will clean up my system. They will make sure that that keeps down flies and attracting pests and it will provide an additional free source of food for my poultry in my free range system. Sounds great. Great permaculture design, Angela. And there are many ways that this has worked out great. Ducks will go nuts over mulberry fruit. And actually I've found that my turkeys really, really like them as well. The chickens will eat it. Um, they'll eat any of the fruit that falls on the ground, but the ducks will just flip out if they get any mulberry fruit on the ground, they will fight everybody else for it. So in that way, it's been a success, but the mulberry by dropping so much fruit makes a big flipping mess. You do not want to plant mulberry over your driveway, anywhere near your house. The fruit is incredibly stainy. So yay for me that I put it way back in the back of my garden where the poultry are going to clean up most of the fruit. So there is minimal staining, but boy, oh boy, do not put this anywhere in your garden where you are concerned about anything from concrete to your clothing getting stained. The second problem with growing a mulberry like this is that they get very, very large. Illinois Everbearing gets up to 60 feet. I knew this when I put it in. So I went to high school in the Midwest. There are plenty of both um, the kind of invasive, uh, wild versions of mulberries there, as well as cultivated varieties. And I knew that they got very large. I also really enjoyed eating mulberry fruit as a teenager when I would go and pick it out in the wild. So I said, okay, I'm gonna control this beast that's gonna to get to be 60 foot tall because I'm going to coppice it. I actually ended up pollarding it, which is, which is slightly different and I will have more discussion on pollarding in the future. And I thought this will keep all of the fruit where I can reach it. It will keep it from being too low where the birds are gonna peck and get all of it. And it'll keep it contained. I did not count on the vigor of this plant. So even pollarding it, it sends out multitudinous <laughs> shoots. Oh, hi, hi duck multitudinous shoots that I have a hard time controlling. It hangs into the neighbor's yard, which I really wish it didn't. And it produces just a huge amount of vegetation. I mean, there's just, there's, there's greenery everywhere down here. So <laughs> stainy fruit. Tree gets very large and also it continues to ripen fruit over a long period of time. And that's why I'm down here every single day in the evening harvesting so that I can fill my container. I usually pick something that can go straight into the freezer and I harvest my mulberries and I just pop them in the freezer. I said in previous videos that I just keep some uh, large containers in my freezer and I just put mixed berries in there for cobblers or for smoothies or um, what have you in the winter, just chuck everything in there. It's impossible to really get enough in one day to do much with. I mean, perhaps you could get enough for a pie. That's, I picked about half a gallon last night. Probably pick about that much tonight. But in general, I harvest them every day for weeks and I stock my freezer. But it is something you've got to be out here picking. If you get behind on it, it will drop the fruit onto the ground. And if you have it in your poultry run, then that's great. Your poultry can clean it up, particularly your ducks who are going to go crazy over it. 
but if not, you're gonna have a big mess. With the fact that this plant gets so large, even though I pollard it, I have to use a step stool back here. If you didn't pollard it, you would be in big trouble for harvesting. So you wanna make sure that you uh, have a step stool, they have a strategy for how to safely reach the fruit. Some folks put a tarp on the ground and shake the trunk and get the berries to drop onto the ground. That's a good strategy or grab the ends of the branches like, like these and just shake and some of the fruit will drop off. That's a good strategy to an extent. I prefer to pick um, on a step stool, but I'm careful not to get up too high. So if I have this plant that gets huge, that I have to pollard it every year, that has messy, stainy fruit, and that I can't harvest it all at once, I have to come back and maintain the harvest day after day after day. Why am I growing it? Okay, so if I have this giant plant that requires yearly pollarding, even so is huge and vigorous, it produces fruit that is very stainy and I have to come back and harvest it day after day after day. It's a maintenance kind of harvest where the harvest is prolonged. That can be beneficial because you can come out and harvest just enough for dinner, but you can do that for weeks on end and not run out of fruit. But it also means it takes vigilance and you can't just harvest all at once and be done. Why do I grow it? Well, for me, I am looking to the permaculture principle, principle number 10, which is to value diversity. When we have diversity in our systems, we build resilience. Not only do we enjoy more diversity in our diet, but we are able to better weather crop failures. We don't have all our eggs in one basket. And I'm have a video coming up on this later this week. When we have difficulties with our other berries that tend to be like bush berries or vine berries or cane berries, like blackberries and raspberries and um, you know perhaps blueberries and honeyberries, if those things struggle, what I have found is that mulberries, a tree fruit and not really related to any of those other plants, they do very, very well. They like hot weather. They have a consistent harvest no matter what I do, no matter what kind of abuse this tree takes in terms of weather or my pruning, it produces very, very well. So having this as my alternate source for berries should my crops fail or like I mentioned in a recent video where I went to you pick to supplement our raspberry harvest this year should our whole community have a crop failure of something I have built resilience into my system by increasing the diversity of berry crops I grow including tree berries in the form of mulberries mulberries are very very sweet um, they kind of lack the acidity that raspberries can have, but they're very, very sweet. They freeze well. They're great for fresh eating, great for baking, great for poultry food. And so they not only help me become more resilient, they not only help me diversify my diet, but they help me in terms of my success as a permaculturist, in terms of wanting to come back out and engage with my permaculture system and to pursue permaculture design. I feel more successful because I know no matter what else happens, every year I'm gonna get a bumper crop of mulberries. Every, every single year, I'm going to have gallons of mulberries for the freezer. Yes, it's work. Yes, it's a big hulking plant. Yes, I've got to prune it. Yes, I've got to come out and pick every evening. But you know what? I would rather be out here picking for a half hour, 45 minutes every evening than, you know, sitting around in the house doing, I don't know, twiddling my thumbs, playing video games. I'd rather be out here. And I love the fact that I'm out here picking. The poultry come and hang out with me because they know I will knock some down or I'll, I'll grab a berry and it'll be like a little overripe and I'll throw it down for the birds. I think sometimes they really like those berries that are... Um, like a little fermented and they get to have like a little after dinner like digestive or like a little cocktail by eating those fermented berries they go straight for them um perhaps more than the regular ripe berries they really like the ones that are a little squishy so for me having mulberries that just feels like a great way to diversify my system it does come with work it does come with additional obligations but it helps me be more resilient okay keep in mind this is a tree that i pollard to keep it small so I actually just recently pruned back. I tend to get long tendrils down here covering my walkway back in under the canopy. So I pruned those back. This is our little roost for turkeys. They like to chill out up here. So as we come in under the canopy here, ah, oh, teenage ducks. Okay, so we're under this nice shady canopy, which I really like if you are on a hot sunny day and you wanna pick mulberries 
it's a nice shady spot. Come back down here. And so these are the ripe mulberries. You can see they come off very, very easily. You barely have to bump in. This, not ripe. Not ripe yet. Not pink. You can see the maturing ones here. There's going to be weeks and weeks. So that when I talk about that prolonged harvest, you can see many stages of maturation all on one branch. So I have to come back every day. People ask me if these get fruit flies. Nope, I have not found they get fruit flies. What I have found is that there are a million spiders that live under here. So the poultry have noticed that I am down here picking and they are waiting patiently. You guys, adolescent ducks are super annoying. Okay, hopefully they won't keep quacking too much. They want me to come get them or bring them treats. So here's my chicken coop. So an additional benefit, if we're looking at permaculture stacking functions, you can see that this is grown so that it shades my coop and cools it in the summer. So when you go to pick, the berries should come off very, very, very easily. So you can see there's tons that I can barely reach and that's why I have a step stool back here. There will be many, many berries a little bit later that I can reach easily from the ground. But I do use a step stool. You can see how prolific with the evening sun backlighting all of the mature and immature berries, how prolific this plant is. So much food. Ooh, hello spider. Like I said, it's really spidery back here. Okay, so an important note, unlike our raspberries and blackberries, which are in the genus Rubus, the genus Morris, they look a lot like uh, raspberries, but they are very different. So again, very sweet, they don't have that sour, and forgive me for a second, I'm gonna show you something. The stem goes all the way through the middle of the berry. So that's how it's supposed to be. You just have to acclimate to the fact that the stem runs the entire length of the berry and it doesn't separate from the berry. It's not bad for you. You can totally eat it. Um, you may need to get used to it a little bit. You can trim the top if you want to, but all through the core of the berry, the stem will persist. It runs the whole length of the berry. It's just the way it is. Different than what we're used to, different than the hollowness of a raspberry. No less delicious and you totally can get used to it. I promise. So thanks for watching today. I've got to get picking before it gets too dark. I hope you all are staying well and safe. I hope that you will continue to come back and check out more of the permaculture educational videos, more about sustainable living philosophy here on Park Rose Permaculture. And in your spare time, check out my Patreon down below. I'll be back real soon. Thanks.